All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to our wow week three. The, uh, are the times flying, or I'm just not paying attention? Uh, so here we are, week three of our summer workshops, and uh, we're going to jump right into it. Before we do, with Coach Mo, and she has uh, more information to discuss, continuing her. Uh, a series on adulting and financial literacy. Um, everyone said that they've enjoyed the information thus far and she's got so much more to dive into. So uh, text your friends now. If they're not on, tell them, hey, the, the workshop is starting. They have the opportunity to register. They can register for this event. Text them right now, everyone who's on and tell them, come on, hop in, join. Uh, before we do that, uh, we had just a, a fantastic time on Thursday, and I want to thank everyone. Coach Mo, thank you for showing up and passing out shirts and giving giving out giveaways, meeting and greeting with students. Thank you so much for being there. Um, Colleen and I worked hard on this event, and we're just glad that everybody uh, came through and, and just, you know, we just had a blast. And I know we have a few students who are on, who were there with us on Thursday. So I want to give you an opportunity, students. Um, you can take yourself off mute and I actually know some of the names. Um, you can take yourself off mute and just tell us what was your experience like? I mean, just just one or two students, 30 seconds. What what, what did you experience? How what, how much fun was it? What was your highlight? I'm sure it was the movie. But, uh, you know, anybody that wants to talk about it, please feel free. And, and Tron, today's workshop is a little shorter, so you don't have to limit them too much. We can let them be a little more interactive. I'm going to go back on mute. OK. All right. So so students, yes. Um, and I see some names of students who were there with us. So again, if you just wanna unmute and tell us how everything went, we're gonna do this again, possibly this summer. We're still working on that. Uh, we're, we're thinking about trying to host another movie event, another movie night at Mods, but we definitely wanna do more stuff like that throughout the year. So we need to hear from you. This is important. We need to hear so we know if this is something you want to continue to do or if we should pivot in a different direction. So I'm just gonna wait for the first student to unmute and give us give us their their feedback. Um, oh, okay. I I pretty much enjoyed it a lot because like I got to invite my friends to do it and it, like having something that was fun for them to do inclined them more to do it. And then it was fun just to meet everyone. I didn't get a I didn't get to get a shirt, but it was like pretty fine. I got to like get a book. I thought that was really fun that they were just passing things out for the help of the students. Awesome. And, and who was that speaking? I didn't get a chance to see your name. It was Rhiannon. Okay, I can get a shirt. So so Rian, so we're gonna put Rhiannon down for a shirt. So Rhiannon needs a shirt. Okay. Cool. Cool. Rhiannon, you will get a shirt. Perfect. And oh, Rhiannon, you. you know, we always ask students this. Uh, what school do you attend or what school are, did you graduate from if you've already graduated? Um no, I'm going to the eleventh grade and I go to Atlantic Tech. ATC. Awesome. Awesome. Your brace advisor is Elizabeth De Jesus, if I'm not mistaken. So make sure yeah. you have a great relationship with your brace advisor. Thank you, Rhiannon. and thank you for showing up. Any other students that want to talk about it? Again, we want to hear from you to know if this is something we should do in the future. If you have any other ideas that you can give us, please let us know. The event was very fun. I um, like the tables. We get to know like the different programs going on in Broward and um, you get to meet some people from the different aspects and also they gave away some pretty cool stuff and information as well. I actually got um, a business card from some of the people. So Awesome, that sounds like Kiefer. Yeah, so it's also a good way to network because you know you meet these people and also the movie was really great. It was fun. Kiefer, awesome. did you get a shirt? No. Okay, I'm gonna get you a shirt. All right, so we gotta get Kiefer a shirt. We'll put your name down, Kiefer. And Kiefer brought his plus one. We were so happy to see your mom there. And she looked like she had a fun time too, right, Kiefer? Yeah, she had a fun time. She liked the movie. Awesome, awesome, thank you. All right, uh, I'm gonna keep this going. I got one more, one more slot for a student that I wanna jump into the presentation for the evening or for the night or evening. So one other student, let's see, who do we have? I, I see some names of folks who are there. So don't be shy. You guys know this is an open forum. We want to hear from everyone or at least one other student. <laughs> who do we have? Who's going to be the last person to speak? The brave soldier, Gen C. Go for it, Gen C. Okay. They guys talking about the movie. Yes. Yeah. I was 
um, I did come late and I didn't stay. The movie was great and everything was great for me. All right, so so Colleen, we may have to do another one just for Gen C because Gen C didn't get a chance to experience everything. But thank you very much for the feedback. Um, if, if anybody else has feedback, please put that in the chat. Uh, put that in the chat. Any feedback you have, any other ideas, any way we can make this better, because uh, we definitely want to do this again. All right. Okay. And for those of you that have questions about the incentives, we'll cover that at the end of our presentation. But just just know you're going to receive some emails about uh, our incentives, our monetary incentives, and you'll also receive some text messages probably uh, very soon. But check your emails. We keep telling you this during all of our meetings. Make sure to check your emails. Um, send those texts out. Make sure that you're following us on Bridge to Life. I've said that enough. It's now time for us to move into. Oh, Jency, did you get a shirt, Jency? Did you get? No. Did you get a, no. Oh, all right. So, Coach Mo, we got another one. Great. All right. It's time for us to to turn our minds over to adulting and financial literacy. You've heard her now three nights. Uh, obviously, you've heard her now two nights. This is her third. Uh, our good friend here from uh, uh, Bridge Life, our good friend here, Miss none other than Mrs. Monique Coach Mo Corker, who is the CEO of Girl BU and who's going to deliver her third series here tonight, or the third part of the series regarding adulting and financial literacy. Everybody start taking notes and get ready. Coach Mo, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Tron. Once again, thank you, Bridge to Life. Thank you, Broward College. Um, thank you to all of the supporters who are bringing these workshops to you all. They are so, so, so important. Uh, when you think about just what you're here for, what your overall life is about, it has to have some type of meaning. And at the end of the day, most people are in it for what? the money. Now, money does not make everything go perfect. So that's another thing that we've talked about, you know, in the beginning of the workshops, money is not a fix all, but having a good money mindset can be. So tonight, we're going to talk about uh, why you need a bank account. We're going to go over what it requires for you to open a bank account. We're going to go over the difference between checking and savings. And then we're going to go over some of these little sayings that you may see floating floating around and you're probably like i have no idea what that really means i mean how many of you all have heard of a rain check come off mute if you've heard of a rain check anyone nobody <laughs> so we'll go over stuff like that so that you can kind of understand some of these terminology that most people may not even think to remind you because Sometimes it's just out of sight, out of mind. So do you really need a bank account? Yes, the answer is yes. Everyone needs a bank account for a multiple amount of reasons. One, for security. A lot of people have lost money. Uh, if you leave it in your home or you try to hide it, I have been broken into before. And listen, if I didn't have insurance on a lot of the things in our home, we, we would have lost a lot of things. But the one thing insurances don't cover is they do not match your dollar for dollar that you may have hidden and tucked away in your house. So another reason why you need a bank account, it's gonna help give you one standard place to be able to check your account balances and to just see everything at one point and you're protected. I wanted to go briefly right here because we talked about this a little bit last week on the difference between credit unions and banks. Now, both banks and credit unions, they do offer pretty much the same amount of products now. They offer checking accounts, savings accounts, home equity loans, mortgages, personal loans, CD loans. So they, they offer pretty much the same amount of accounts, but they're different because a credit union is not considered a for-profit organization. A credit union is not in it for profit. Credit unions are, are, are basically managed by their members and they are regulated by the NCUA, which is the National Credit Union Federation Administration, if I remembered it correctly. And banks are regulated by 
a lot of other regulators, which are the Federal Reserve Board, the OCC, and um, there's another one I can't think of right in my head, the Comptroller of Currency, the FDIC, the Federal Reserve Board. So those are the regulators. And why do banks need regulators? Why do credit unions need regulators? Because someone is always watching to make sure that banks and credit unions are trying to do the right things by their customers. They don't want people not lending to everyone. You know, we don't want discriminatory practices. We don't want predatory lending. Uh, so those are the reasons why banks and credit unions are governed by someone else that regulates them um, to make sure they're staying on track. The difference also between credit unions and banks, credit unions used to be very particular about their members. If there was a teacher credit union, normally only teachers and family members or someone that is associated with that teacher could become a part of the credit union. Banks, what did I say they are? They're for profit. Anybody can become a bank member. So, you know, there's the difference between the two. Another big difference is credit unions are normally local. Um, banks are normally very spread out. So let's take a look at, you know, Bank of America, Comerica, um, Wells Fargo. So I'm sure when you travel, you see those all over the place. But when you look for um, a teacher's credit union or um, I can't even think of some of the other credit unions, but you don't see very many credit unions around. So when you're thinking about what's important for you in a bank or for where your money is, location right you want to be able to access going into the bank because we also talked about what last week building a relationship with your banker when you have a relationship with your banker and someone says who do you bank with it should not be the bank's name it should be the person that you built that relationship with oh i bank with such and such at such and such bank that way you know you're building that type of relationship Here's a typical story we're going to go over and I want you all to understand this is another reason why you do need a bank account. Um, this happens to so many people and they do not realize the amount of money that they are actually spending until it's too late. So this person here is Tara's story. This is what is called check cashing services. I know a lot of you all see check cashing stores all over the place. They're everywhere, right? So before she opened a checking account, Tara used to uh, check her weekly cash check and it was she was charged $10 every time she ch uh, cashed her check. She actually got four checks every month. So if she's charged $10 and she's paying, um, getting four checks, that's $40 a month, okay? If you do the math, $40 a month and, and do that by 12, that's $480 in a year that she paid to just cash her own paycheck. Now, I'm gonna tell you why this happens to so many people. Because when you need money right away and you can't get the money right away for whatever reason, and you go to the check cashing store, $10 doesn't sound bad, right? So $10 sounds like, oh, it's just $10. But when you actually do the math and you look at, that's $480 over a year period you've got to see that there's a big reason why you need a bank account because your bank is not going to charge you to cash your paycheck, okay? So make sure when you get your job, you try to go find a bank account wherever it's closest for you. You want to try not to use check cashing services um, that are charging you to, to cash your own paycheck. You worked hard for that paycheck, so you don't want to fall victim to that, okay? And they're everywhere. Trust me, you'll see a cash check in store everywhere on almost every other corner. So what do you need to open a bank account? I just told you you need a bank account. So let's talk about what do you need? The first thing you need is to understand whether or not you're responsible. That's the first key. You have to be responsible because once you open a bank account, you are now creating a contract per se. You are telling the bank that I want to do, I want to have a relationship with you and I'm going to be a good steward of my money. I'm not going to bounce checks. I'm going to take care of my account. And in return, you're going to allow me to use your debit card. You're going to allow me to possibly get a loan in the future, et cetera. So the first step is, are you responsible? And that goes with even school. So are you late to class? Um, are you late on your assignments? Um, are you coming up with excuses as to why something didn't get done? 
These are all things you have to think about as you're moving into the adulting stage that also have a lot to do with your money behaviors. So if you're responsible, yes, you can go open that account. When you go open the account, if you are under the age of 18, you will have to open what we call a minor or custodial account with a parent or a guardian. What happens is everything at that point is pulled off of the person that's opening the account with you. They will have access to the account just as much as you have access to the account. Um, and that's to just help secure the bank because they know that you're in a learning stage at this time and this will be your first bank account. What do you need to open the checking account if you are 18 and older? You'll definitely need a photo ID. It does not have to be a driver's license. You can use a regular photo. Um, uh, what is it called? It's a regular ID. I think a print. I don't even know the difference. Gosh, I haven't gone to get a license in so long. I think it's just a regular ID card. I think they issue those still. Um, you will need to know your social security number. And we're going to talk about identity fraud in the next workshop because it's very important for you to make sure you do not share your information with your best friend because she's your best friend today. She may not be your best friend tomorrow. And that happens all the time. So these are things you're going to keep to yourself, okay? You're going to need a small deposit. Depends on what bank you go to. It could be anywhere from $10 to $25. Um, you'll have to shop around and find out which deposit is best fitted for you on what your goals and um, you know what your budget looks like. And last but not least, you need a disciplined mindset. We've talked about mindset forever, ever since we've had these workshops, because a disciplined mindset is going to be key to your financial success, okay? And, and Coach Mo, if, if if I can jump in really quick, do I have a minute? Of course. If, if you go back to that last slide, uh, and, and students, I, I want to make sure you, you guys hear, hear everything Coach Mo said, the difference between the two accounts, the minor account versus, you know, an adult account. But um, the, the first question she asks is, are you responsible? One thing about having an account is, especially nowadays, you receive emails when, when transactions occur, or you'll receive notifications when transactions occur, or if there's a message from the bank account. These are things that should not go unread. You should be reading your emails, responding to the, well, not responding, but reading those emails because there's valuable information in most of the emails you receive from your bank. Anytime I get an email from my bank, I stop and I read it. And sometimes it's just a, a press release, so maybe a new feature that they're rolling out. But my bank's contacting me, I need to pay attention to it. Why? Because that bank houses is where my money is housed. So uh, be responsible, please. And you, you heard me mention it earlier, the importance of checking your student email. This is equally as important as checking your student email, checking stuff uh, regarding your bank. So I just want to throw that out there. Make sure you are constantly reviewing your account. Make it a priority once, twice a week, once, twice a month to do that. That's a part of adulting. That's a part of being responsible. Just want to throw that out there. Thank you so much, Tron. And listen, I told, told Colleen in the beginning, this is the Mo and Tron show. So whenever you want to come in and help elaborate, there's enough of us to help give as much education as we can to our youth together. So I appreciate that. Um, the, the next thing, so going to just go over briefly the difference between a checking and a savings account. A lot of people don't know what the difference is and why they, why they even exist. Like, why did you have to separate them? Well, um, if you remember our cute little young lady way back on the other workshop, she talked about how the banks make money, right? Uh, so this is the reason how the banks make money. Um, your checking account is there to have money go in and out all the time, in and out all the time. It's there to be the transactional account itself. It's not meant to just have money sitting in it and not being used. And checking accounts are normally a lower interest type of account, meaning sometimes there's zero percent interest on a checking account because there's so much going on and it costs so much money to allow that checking account to actually do what it needs to do. They don't pay you interest on that unless you get a checking account that requires you to keep a higher balance. So most checking accounts are zero percent interest and they normally don't require a minimum balance if there's zero percent interest. Now, some checking accounts do have stipulations where they say you've got to have a direct deposit coming into this checking account. Um, so when you open the account, make sure you ask these questions. If you're over 18 and you're opening your first account, make sure you ask what is required for me to not be charged a monthly fee in this checking account. 
Some people require a direct deposit of $250. Okay, that sounds easy enough, right? Well, what if your direct deposit is only $125? Does that count? These are the type of questions you're going to have to ask because if you don't meet the minimum requirement, you can't go back and say, well, I didn't understand and then try to ask for the feedback. You wanna ask those questions ahead of time so that you're not charged any unnecessary fees. So your checking account is linked to what we like to call as an ATM or a debit card. Now, the funny thing about the checking account, the ATM card and debit card work together on this account. When we go into the savings account, I'll explain a little bit different. The ATM card does not have the Visa or MasterCard logo on it. Normally your ATM card uh, usually is just a regular plastic card and it doesn't have much on there because it's not used in different stores and, and it doesn't have the Visa and the MasterCard capability, if that's, if that's a good word to say. Your debit card, on the other hand, will have a Visa and MasterCard logo on it and it can be used almost anywhere that you see the little sign when you go to the stores you see we accept visa mastercard american express etc okay and that's because once again everybody knows if you're coming to spend money you're most likely supposed to be spending it out of what your checking account okay your savings account is there for you to earn money when you deposit more money so savings accounts normally pay at least some type of interest rate um, they're not the best rates right now, and you'll learn as you get older, because we talked about compound interest last week, you'll learn to start asking questions. What is the interest rate for this savings account? Because it matters. You know, you don't want to just open an account and not know what the opportunity is to make money off of the money you have sitting in that savings account. The savings account is not to be used as a transactional account. It's exactly what it's called, saving. So they want you to put money in this account and you keep the money in that account and it continues to grow interest. The reason the banks like you to put money into the savings account is because it all goes back into a pool to reloan money back out. So the more money that's sitting in the savings account, they can pretty much guarantee I've got this amount of money sitting in here and now I can put this outside for me to loan to millions of other people, you know, different loans, credit cards, et cetera. So it's a benefit for you, for the bank, for you to keep money in a savings account, but the way they pay you back is in the form of interest. Now the savings account normally usually only has an ATM card linked to it. Um, now that we're in a new day and age, I have seen some special accounts that may have access to a debit card, but you want to be very careful because a savings account only allows six withdrawals. And that's normally pretty much in every institution that I know of. Um, you are limited because they want to know that this is regulated as a savings account. So six withdrawals, but you can ask your, your bank wherever you go to, how many times can I take money out of the savings account? Transfers may be different, meaning if you want to transfer money from your savings to your checking, if for some reason you didn't budget right and you check that email that Tron said and you got an alert that said your balance is low, which that's not going to happen to any of you all on this, um, on this workshop. But if you get one of those and you need to transfer money from your savings to your checking, you'll have to check with that particular bank to see if that counts in your six withdrawals or your transactions trying you came on come on talk to me yep no we someone already posted a question in the chat uh is it six general withdrawals or six withdrawals per year i think it's per month correct it is per month it is per, month. per month that's a great question uh Hager barbosa great question great question yeah, so six works. withdrawals per month they are paying attention awesome and, and if you go over the six withdrawals what happens well guess what They'll end up converting your savings account to a checking account eventually. They'll say, hey, you, you're not trying to save money. You're using this as a transactional account. So they'll automatically convert it to a checking account. I've had some people come in and they're like, why did I, why do I have two checking accounts now? Well, because you were using this one just as much as you were using the other. So great question. Um, and you can be charged a certain uh, transfer or overdraft, not overdraft, but you can be charged transaction fees and amounts for over uh, doing your transaction limits in your savings account. Did anyone else have any questions? Because that was a great question while we're just talking basically about the difference between those two accounts. Okay, no? Okay, good. All right, so we're gonna go into the, 
<laughs> trying you can come off mute look because I, I still have to cover this even though we have probably gone away from checks um they still exist so i still want you all to know what the basics of a check is what oh, yeah. Mean. Um, oh yeah um because, because you still get them but people laugh at me trying when i still try to teach about it um but it's important so if you haven't seen a check i want you all to look at what's on the screen everything up until the left hand corner there is going to be your name so your name your address that's important so wherever your bank accounts name and address has on it that's what's going to go on the check okay if you were writing this check to someone you would write the check where it says pay to the order of and you would put their full name there you don't want to put dc you don't want to put coach mo even though i'm coach mo unless i have an account where I have a DBA and that's called doing business as Coach Mo, and I don't because I don't do this business as Coach Mo, would be the only way you'd be able to write like that fiduciary type of name in that pay to order. You always want to write the date that you are writing the check, okay? You do not want to post date a check, okay? I know y'all might have heard of that before. So someone says, Can I post date the check to you? Meaning, I don't want you to cash the check until a couple of days later. No, that doesn't work. You never give somebody a check if you don't have the money in your account. Your check number, that's pretty standard. Now, two important parts on this check that are really, really, really important. And I'm gonna have, I want you all to come off mute because I wanna see who knows the difference. Which one means the amount of the check? Is it the box with the dollar sign or is it the one with the line that says dollars? Come off mute if you know the answer. Which one takes priority? The, the number where you write the numbers into the dollar sign where it says amount of check or where you write the amount of the check that's written? You all can guess. The written one? Oh my goodness, who was that? Uh, that was me. What's, what's, I can't see your name, Queen, I'm sorry. Uh, it's Rayanne. Rayanne. So how did you know that? Did you just guess or you just knew that? I kind of guessed, but at the same time, I just assumed that it was the written one because just in case someone writes the wrong number in the box and they write the right number in like the written amount, that would kind of take priority over the it, mistake. It definitely would. So great job. Yes, and I have seen this happen where people make mistakes and, you know, they've written, you know, $500 in the dollar amount, but the check is for $50 and people come in the bank saying, Mo, I, I want to cash this check. I'm supposed to get $500. No, we go by the written legal line because the written legal line is what takes priority. So what does that mean to you? you have to be careful too. So if you ever get into a place where you're writing a check to someone and you write $50 in the check, but you don't know how to write $50 out in the legal line and you write $55 or $5,500 or whatever mistake you can make, just know that that written legal line is what takes priority when it's being cashed by the bank, okay? Now, the line where it says memo, you can always put a little note there. This is for babysitting or this is for a loan, whatever you want to put there. That's very important because sometimes if you ever, you know, need to go to court or you need to show proof of something that you pay, you can show that that's what you basically wrote the check for. And the last most important part on the check is what? The signature. You will be surprised how many people have come to the bank where someone's giving them a check and they want to cash it and the person forgot to sign the check. <laughs> so, yeah. And, and you, as you're receiving a check, if you ever receive a check, what do you need to look for? A signature. And we're going to get into a paycheck a little later so we can look at that as well. But some of you all may get jobs where people may write you a check from their business account and the check is still going to look just like this. So when you get that check, now you know, hey, uh, boss man, uh, you didn't sign my check before you take the check. The weekend comes around and you can't get paid. So now you know what to look for when you're looking at the check. And Tron, did you want to add anything? Yep. Okay. So, so at, at the bottom, you see routing and account numbers. And, and I just want students to know checks are still viable options. People, there are companies that still use checks. Um, a lot of uh, uh, renting um, leasing offices 
um, they don't they may not require a check up front. In certain cases, they can require a check or a money order. Um, you know, when you first lease your apartment, or sorry, when, when you sign a lease. But the routing number is really important here as well because um, I'm one who always forgets my account number. I always forget my anytime I go to a, a you know I set up a deposit or anything like that. I always have to refer to my checkbook for the account number. So if you if you don't know what your account number is, if you haven't written it down somewhere, which is an idea, you want to write down all of your personal information, store it somewhere safe and secure. But your check tells you what your account number is, you know, whatever account you're using to, to make transactions out of. And it's right there at the bottom. It gives you your routing number and your account number. So just keep that in mind when you order a checkbook. And yes, make sure you order a checkbook from your bank. If they are still viable and they're still being used today. But this is important because a lot of kids don't know about checks. I didn't learn about checks until I was in my early 20s and I had to sit with my mom to, to learn how to balance a checkbook. This is important. So thank you, Mo. Just keep going. And I got one better for you. Instead of writing down your check number or your account number, every, I don't know, not one mobile app now that does not have access for you to just click on your mobile app, go down where it says view, you'll see your routing number and what they call your account number or a wire number or an ACH number. So when you get into talking about um your fafsa and filling out that information for you to get your refund when you're going into college they're going to be asking where do you want these funds deposited and i know tron is going to say you want a direct deposit because you don't want something to go to your mail so you're definitely going to want to know that your routing number is how you will receive the money and what that is is that's telling business a to route the, the route this money to this particular bank okay so every bank has their own individual routing number now once the little train goes to the bank and drops off the money they need to know where do you want me to put the money that now is your bank account so it goes from business bank a they put a deposit on the train the train said i came to the bank i'm gonna drop off the money to the bank and now i need to put the money into the account and i'm gonna do that by the account number so now you all kind of understand how direct deposit works when someone says i need your routing and your ach or account number okay and then coach mo we have one question in the chat uh the question is regarding the the purpose of a check this is if you're writing a check to someone so i guess just uh, uh regarding your entire conversation here um and i, th I think the the simple answer to that is yes but just understanding what a check looks like and the uh different meanings to all of the fields and areas on a check uh chad that's really what coach mo is referring to but chad did that answer your question but this this works both ways so if you receive a check you should know all your stuff should be in the opposite places that we talked about so if, like I said, if you went and did work for your neighbor and they said, you know, let me write you a check. If they put, you know, next week's date, are you going to accept the check? No, you're going to be like, hey, I need the check dated today of the day of the service that you're paying me for. If they wrote the name wrong and spelt your name wrong and your ID says this name, you're going to need another check because, you know, the banks are normally pretty lenient if it's something that's like a one off. But if it's a totally different spelling, um, like oh, I can't even think some, but if it's a totally different spelling than what your ID says and it doesn't look normal to like, oh, it might have been just a one letter off, they're not going to allow you to, 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 to cash the check. Same thing with the dollar amount. And the reason that's important is because now I want y'all to look at the back of the check. It's very important to look at the back of the check. And I like to tell you this because um, when you get a check, what what do you need to do with it? You know, what, what do you do with the check when you get it? Well, the first thing you want to do is don't sign your check unless you're at the bank and you're ready to deposit the check. This is a mistake that a lot of people make. They get a check and they endorse it right away. Why is this dangerous? Well, because you basically endorsed and said that I'm ready to cash the check. Here's my signature saying this is my check and I want to go ahead and cash it. But guess what? Anybody you lose the check, who has access to your signature now? Who can go and do anything with that check and possibly get it cashed at some of these little, you know, 
places that don't pay attention to signatures and IDs. So you always want to endorse. And the reason I'm teaching you this so that you know what the word endorsement means, it's you signing, you're endorsing your signature. So you're basically putting your stamp saying, this is my name. And most people, and I know they don't teach many youth cursive, but you, you do want to at least learn to sign your name in cursive. If you have not practiced that, I can encourage you there. There are apps that you can, I mean, um, you can go online and put your name in uh, different, you know, software and practice signing your name in cursive. It is important. Cursive is technically a signature. So print, a lot of people print, but that's not technically a signature. So on the back of the check, you'll always endorse. Um, if for some reason they wrote the check to uh, Monique and they forgot the E, on the end of my name. I would sign twice on the back of this check. I'd write out my name, Monique with an E. And I'd also say in this case, I'm also the wrong Monique, which is the M-O-N-I-Q-U without the E. So the bank would work with you if for some reason, you know, like I said, the, the, the name on the pay to order is, is wrong. The rest of the parts of the back of the check don't really apply to you too much. They're more for the banks when we run the checks through the reader systems, et cetera. So unless you're going to work for the bank, I'm not going to go too much into that. Tron, did you want to add something? Yeah, no, um, I, I got a I got a message here. It says never, 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 ever sign a blank check. Oh yeah. <laughs> never Mo Mo, can you can you speak to that for a second? Oh uh, well, first of all, unless you unless you got multiple dollars <laughs> in <laughs> I mean, hey, yeah, no, I mean, I, listen, I want each and every one of you all to get to where you got that mindset that you could have blank checks, you know, and you know, but yeah, no, you never want to sign a blank check because anyone can fill out the dollar amount. Um, and guess what? It, it has happened where people have been able to cash checks because some banks let checks overdraft people's accounts. So you could be like, I only gave them $300 and you know, I didn't have the $300. How did they get to cash the check? Oh, well, you know, some banks will overdraft your account. So when you thought you had the $300 and the person held the check for a month, you know, and 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 I'm so sorry, I'm going to put a note in here. I have not worked in the bank for a while, but banks are stale dated. I mean, checks do get stale dated. And I do believe it's 90 days from the date that you write the check. Um, but some people hold checks. Uh, for example, my husband, he can get a check. He's not rushing to go cash the check right away, but you've got some people who go and cash a check right away. So whenever you write the check, you just have to make sure you know you have that money in there. No matter if a week or two has gone by, that person is still guaranteed to get the money that you told them they could have. Tron, did you want to add anything else? No, nope. nope, we're, we're good to go. I think you covered that. Yeah, don't don't sign a blank check because anybody can put any amount of money there and then it's coming out of your account. Don't exactly. sign blank checks, period. Yeah, definitely not. So we also talked about credit cards basically and why do you need a bank account? Well, because the best place in my opinion is to get credit cards from financial institutions. Now you can get store cards and all those other little, you know, um, cards that have like a 28% interest rate, which of course Coach Mo is not encouraging you to do. Um, you definitely want to try to get a card from your financial institution. And we, we talked about a credit card, but I'm going to go over it a little bit more. So a credit card is just a piece of plastic that the bank or whoever the, the form of the lender says, I trust you. You and I have a relationship, so I trust you. And I'm going to let you borrow, let's say $500, okay? Now, you borrow this $500, you have a card. There's no cash attached to this credit card, but we'll talk about how you can get cash, even though we're not going to do, do that option. But you can now go and buy stuff with this card and pay it back later. So... The problem with credit cards, if the first thing we talked about, you don't have a disciplined mindset, is everyone has a plan. But if you don't plan and budget or have a plan with a spending plan, credit cards can trip, truly become a disadvantage to you as quickly as like in a second, okay? Because you go and pay $300 on this card to buy whatever. 
whatever you bought, I guarantee you, you wore it, you used it, you ate it, you, you, you whatever. You, you've done whatever you wanted to do with the merchandise that you bought, but now you still owe the bank. Remember, we became friends. So you still owe me, even though now it's out of sight, out of mind, the item or merchandise or the service that you paid for. So now you still have to pay me back the money plus interest if you don't pay it off within 30 days. So if you borrow $300 and you go past 30 days, you now owe the bank 30 days worth of interest on the $300 that you borrow. So I like to give people this example when, when I think about a credit card. If you went to the store and you saw a bag of chips that cost $3, okay? And then you saw a bag of chips that cost $10. Once again, which bag of chips do you want to eat? The $3 bag, right? However, if you said, I'm going to put this on my credit card, you're going to eat the chips and sometimes most likely end up paying $10 for a bag of chips, unless you're disciplined to pay off the balance of that card within the 30 days of you using the card or actually doing the transaction. Okay. So credit cards are good for you. You should get them from your bank, but only if you're disciplined. And that's another reason why you do need a bank account because as your checking account grows, your savings account grows, you're showing the bank that I'm responsible and I have a good amount of uh, history in my checking and savings account. So I'd now like to deepen my relationship and apply for some type of credit with you, okay? So the difference, of course, between the debit card and the credit card and even a, a money card or what do they call it? Um, I can't, even, I don't use those, so I don't really remember. They're like the prepaid cards. That's what they call, I'm sorry. So prepaid cards, but guess what? Prepaid cards are not bad. So a prepaid card and, and someone told me this and I thought it was pretty genius. I have an iPhone. Okay. And I hate when I do subscriptions on my iPhone and I completely forget that, uh, you know, I did a three day trial for something. And then all of a sudden 999 comes out my account. I'm like, wait a minute, where, where did I come from? But you know, like Tron said, I get an alert. <laughs> so I'm looking to see the problem with that is I didn't budget because I did a three day trial and I completely forgot to cancel the subscription. And now I got a $9.99 charge coming out of my account. The reason I'm saying the prepaid card is a good thing because you can tie your Apple ID to prepaid cards, which are just a better way to make sure that you don't overdo it when it comes to subscriptions um, and things that are not easy to track. Um, your debit card is different than your credit card because the debit card is tied to your money and your money alone. That's it. Um, debit cards are tricky. Uh, you can go to the gas station. I'm telling you all this because I know it happens because guess what? Coach Mo has done it back in the days. I am not. I am guilty. I, I, I'm a very honest person. When times were hard back when I was growing up, I went to the gas station and I would put my debit card in and it let me pump a whole $40 worth of gas and I might only had $2, okay? This is what debit cards can do to you though. If you go and do that, guess what happens? Guess how much Coach Mo's gas cost back then because I, I did the $40 and didn't have it. Who, who wants to tell me how much you think I paid for gas just to go out back then in college and have fun? I probably end up paying almost $75 for gas because if you don't have the money in the account when it's time for that transaction to clear, you're now charged $35 on top of the transaction. So you don't want to give the bank $35 because you went and pumped gas and, and it let you pump as much gas as you wanted to and you didn't budget, okay? So that is debit and credit cards. And this is just a quick, I think it's 644 account. Okay, Tron, I'm keeping up with time this time. This is just a quick little synopsis again of how credit cards work. I wanted you all to make sure you pay attention that you know, you have options to pay things off in 30 days, but you also have interest that's going to be accrued. You'll get what's called a payment due date on a statement. You'll get your new balance and you'll always have a minimum payment. The reason credit cards are tricky for people is because that minimum payment looks so much more doable, right? Than the amount of the purchase that you originally, I mean, look at it. If you had an option to pay $1,258.56 versus 
and you get to save the $1,258 in your mind, right? Which one are you going to do? You know, most people end up only paying the minimum payment on credit cards, which now means you're probably going to be maxed out on the credit card. You're going to take almost 10 years to pay off a debt that should have been paid off in less than six months or something of that case. But the minimum payment is more appeasing. But you all are going to have a disciplined mindset and you're going to have a budget already in mind to probably pay off that credit card within at least three months. I'm not saying one month, but at least three months because you budgeted, right? So I want to move really quickly because I thought this was really important. And, and, and Tron, I want you to come out because this is fun for us to look at, you know. I had some kids say, you know, well, what is what is 90 days same as cash? Like, what does that really mean? You know, what does that really mean? I see it all over the place, um, you know, so what does 90 days same as cash mean? Does anybody want to come off mute and tell me or, or take a guess at what they think um, 90 days same as cash means? No, I don't got any brave ones. I can I can answer it, but I want to hear from a student. They may can not I, want to. Can I, can I guess? Yeah, go, go ahead. Go for it. it. Uh, he says 90 days, same. Is it something like you don't pay for something? For like a trial or something? 90 day trial? It's, it's kind of like that. And you, but you know why this is important? Is that Brandon? No, it's Chad. Oh, Chad, Chad. Do you know why this is important? Because I know you all have seen this before, right? I know if you've gone to different stores, they promote this 90 days, same as cash you know, advertisement. So what it is, is it's a ploy basically to say, we're going to give you 90 days to pay us back. Okay. So they're letting you borrow $300 for 90 days. As long as you pay, well, Tron, I'm sorry, you were going to answer it. <laughs> well, I, I wasn't going to get into the details of it, but I was just going to say, go on ahead. I'll give you my answer when you're done. So, yeah, so they're basically telling you, if you pay us back in 90 days, we're not going to charge you any interest. What they bank on is the mistake of you hitting that 91st day. And there are statistics that show majority of people who fall for this 90 day same as cash will hit the 91st day and your interest is going to be out of the roof for something that you thought was supposed to be quick and over and done with. So I'm gonna let Tron go ahead. What were you gonna add? Thank you, Coach Mo. So if it seems too good to be true, then it probably is. And students, there are tons of offers like this, whether it's at a store, whether it's a furniture store, Letting you loan, you know, that's loaning you something or whether it's a bank, stay away from these ploys. That's exactly what they are. It's a ploy. It's a trick because like Coach Mo said, they're banking on you and most people fall for it. Look, I've fallen for it from a, um, if, I think it was the last time I had cable, which I'm not even ashamed to admit. I haven't had cable since like 2009, 2008. And I said, I'm done with this cable industry. I'm done with it. It's a monopoly, whatever. But one thing that I got enrolled into was your first for your first six months are at a discounted low rate of, you know, $25 a month after that. And then it had it in really small, fine print, your monthly fee, your monthly uh, cable fee is going to be $215, something like that. So I remember I signed up and I was like, you know what, I'm going to try this six month thing, see how that goes. And then I'll decide if I want to renew or not. Well, I didn't read where it said it was going to auto renew. I didn't read where it said after six months, I'm going to be charged $250. This is kind of similar to that, where if you're not careful in that 90 day window or whatever the time frame is, once you cross that that next, you know, once you move into that next day, now you're getting hit with a ton of interest. You, 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 yeah, your interest rate is going through the roof and it's not it's not anything that they're spelling out in front of you, but they give you just enough information on the flyer or whatever you're reading to bait you in. So I was just going to say avoid it at all costs. In most cases, in my opinion, this is my opinion now, these things are too good to be true and I avoid it. That's a, listen, so we're moving over to the next picture because Tron said something that I wanna make sure you all understand as you're going to be eventually in your adulting stage, you will be entering contracts. 
you when you sign something when you sign to get a bank account when you sign for a credit card when you sign for a car when you go get a cell phone anything that you have put your what endorsement on which is your signature whether it's electronically signed or if you sign uh, via handwritten signature it's a contract which means what you are going to be held accountable to whatever it is. So if you didn't read the fine print, and let me tell you, there are pages and pages of things that people just do not read. And the, the person who's going to point it out to you that you didn't read it knows it's there. I, let me say that one more time. The person who's going to point it out to you. So when you call Coach Mo at the bank and say, I didn't know I was going to be charged $35. I'm going to be able to point right to the terms on your agreement that you signed and say on page 32, it shows you and you're going to be like, I didn't read all that, but you need to. So and, and Coach Mo, I'm jumping in one more time. I'm sorry, but it's it's their job, especially if somebody's selling you this, it's their job to make the sell. They want you to sign up for this. So in most cases, unless you're just working with somebody who's just going to be completely open with you, in most cases, they're not going to disclose those terms unless you ask. And then they'll give you bit by bit by bit. But they just want you to sign up for the offer. Or if you get an email, which is why I said sometimes it's, it's important to check your email, but sometimes you'll get some offers like this from different banks or different other financial institutions. You need to read carefully. But they won't give you that information up front because they want to make the sale. They want to bring you into this really unique program. Again, my opinion, avoid it like the plague. So also, so down at the bottom, there's, you know, I love makeup. I told y'all that in the beginning of the workshop. I am a makeup girly. So I found this, this little picture here. But this happens a lot where you all are going to be in stores. And some of you all may already look like you might be 18. So you might have already been asked. And if you've heard this, I want you to know what they're telling you. So have you ever been like to Forever 21 and or Victoria's Secrets or Bath and Body Works, any of these little stores, and they say, hey, would you like to get 15% off your order? I can, I can give you 15% off today. That, that's what they tell you. I can give you 15% off today. And you're like, oh, well, yeah, shoot, I, I'll take 15% off, okay? And then they say, okay, well, all I need is just your social security number, fill out this information, and you'll get these rewards as um, soon as you do this. No. It's not a reward. There's a difference between a rewards program and when they say, I need your social. If they say, I need your social, you are applying for some type of credit. And you don't want to do that for store cards because most store cards usually have the highest interest rate. Now, my first store card was, you know, a store card back in the days, but I didn't know any better. So you all are going to know better and have a relationship with your bank or credit union and try to build your credit there first. Because the difference between a store card and if you look at the bottom left hand corner, a bank card is going to give you different types of rewards that are actually going to be beneficial for you. OK, so if you get a Forever 21 card and I'm not picking on Forever 21, it's the only one I can think of that most, you know, youth shop at or whatever. But can you go buy groceries with that that card? You know, I, I'm, I'm hungry. today. Nope. <laughs> I didn't budget, but, you know, I got this. I got this Forever 21 card. I, you know that I, I got money on it. So I, can you go buy groceries? No. OK, so that even when you just think about that, is the card flexible or is it a card just for Forever 21? And that's exactly what store cards are. Yes, the discounts sound great. But once you look at the math, that 15 percent, if you look at your interest rate, I guarantee you the interest rate is 18 percent. So even though they were saving you so-called 15 percent, you still actually paid over the 15 percent because now your interest rate is 18 percent all right they're 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 making they're making that discount back in interest rates plus some and, and also uh how often are you going to shop at forever 21 or or ny company there's a couple of them that i know about how often are you going to shop at those you know how often do you shop at them now do you shop every weekend every week every month probably not that often but keep this in mind if you have that card in hand, and this is where they get you to, this is where they take advantage of the consumer mindset that a lot of us have. If you have that card in hand, or if you have that card in your purse, in your wallet, and you are at the mall or you're nearby the mall, you're probably going to be inclined to use that card because you're going to say, well, you know what? I like that outfit. I do have the card. 
I'm just going to swipe and use my credit card today. And guess what? You'll continue swiping and swiping and swiping until you max out the card. Then they have you right where you right where they want you because you have to pay that card off. If you don't pay it off, it goes into collections and that's just going to balloon into something even bigger. So and like trying, Coach Mo said. And trying to get even worse with the store cards because after you swipe so much, eventually they could close your card. They can close the card. You'll end up with a balance on the card and not even ever be able to use the card again, but it still hurts. And, and next week, my colleague, I won't be with you all next week. Um, I'm going to Dubai. So um, next week, um, my colleagues are going to be coming on here talking to you about credit and they're going to explain the difference between when you're you know, at capacity with your cards. But it's important to know that those store cards have maxes. They have different regulations and rules of how they, they, they manage their cards. But I want you to see really quick because it's 656. The, the last on the bottom left, you see where it says 3% cash back, okay? In the category of your choice, 2% at grocery stores and wholesale clubs and 1% on all other purchases. Now, I just pulled this from one bank and just gave you an example, but this is the benefit of having a relationship in a bank account and getting a credit card with your bank because it's great to know that if I go and spend gas on, on my credit card and I already budget it because remember, you're not just going and swiping a card and saying I'm getting $30 worth of gas and you didn't already budget for $30 worth of gas. So when you use the credit card, and you say, I want to get 3% back on my $30 purchase, you're really going to get 3% back because you're going to pay that gas off right away. You're going to transfer because you already budgeted it, right? So the benefits are the bank cards can be used anywhere. So that same outfit that you want at Forever 21, and if you're hungry at the same time when you leave out of Forever 21, at least you could get both purchases and get cash back when you're disciplined and using those credit cards. So I'm gonna stop right there because it's 657. Um, when I come back on the, the week after that, we're gonna go over the payday and I wanna show you all how to look at your pay stubs, how to understand your gross versus your net income. So we're gonna go over a lot of different information, but I'm gonna close out and ask, does anyone have any questions? I know that was a lot, oh my goodness, do I have any advice for someone with a spending problem? That's all of us. Listen, I tell people spending is a, is a constant mindset. There's no way that, you know, people say if you do something for 21 days, it'll be a habit. I don't believe that when it comes to money, okay? Because you're being marketed to so much that you just have to be accountable to what you do with your money. And once you actually see it, like I'm telling you, if you just try this for one week, whoever has a spending issue, write down what you started with today in your bank account or with how much money you have. Just keep a track, okay? You went to Publix, you spent $40. Now you went and got gas, you spent $30. Now you went and did this, you spent it. And then you look at what you actually did it's something about the mind when you can see it. But see, when you swipe and you keep swiping and you keep swiping, it's totally a different feeling because it's out of sight, out of mind. You're not keeping track of really how much you're spending. So anyone that has what I like to say triggers when it comes to overspending because it's not a, you know, I, I like to be very careful when we say they're bad things. Remember, we built money relationships, okay? So some of us are connected to spending means worth, okay? Or spending means that I made it, or, you know, spending means I'm, I can show people that I'm, a, you know, I've achieved something in life. So it all has to do with your mind. So when you think about why am I spending, I went and bought so many Louis Vuitton shoes and all of them hurt my feet. It was the worst investment I could have ever done when I was making good money. And it was because Coach Mo didn't, didn't know her worth. I didn't understand. I don't need a red bottom to walk into a building and show that I am the queen bee. I don't need that. I am enough. So I had to you know, deal with those mindset issues. So all of you all are going to have your own you know, separate individual talks with yourself in regards to your money relationship. But the goal is 
what's going to make you money happy and it's not spending and then worrying why you spent afterwards so you have to find out what that trigger is to try to come back to spending i hope i kind of answered that let me uh, coach mom i'm going to answer that and then i'm going to address a question we have in the chat um so two things number one consider these two words appreciation versus depreciation for uh for example as soon as you buy a car and you drive that car off the lot immediately the value of that car begins to drop because you're starting to wear and tear the tires you're starting to use oil the engine starting to run you're constantly depreciating the value of a vehicle when you buy it but yet you have some folks who put a lot of worth and a lot of money into their vehicles having a nice vehicle is is, is, is a good thing but having a vehicle that gets you from point a to point b it's sturdy it's strong it works it's more important. You don't have to spend a lot of money on a vehicle when in a few years you're going to probably get another one, whether it's used or new. Same thing goes with clothes and just general shopping. A lot of people spend a lot of money on it that they don't have. If you have the money to spend, go for it. But just consider clothing, cars, all of those kinds of things, they depreciate. Things that appreciate savings, adding, you know, when the bank pays you for you, say, keeping your money in their location money markets, CDs, investing, those things appreciate. Heck, I'll go a step further. Your education, <laughs> you know, going to college and earning that certificate or degree, diploma, whatever it is, eventually you be, you should be able to make money off of that. Investing in yourself appreciates. So appreciation and finding way, and versus- finding ways trying to, for something to pay for what you want. That's a whole different mindset. See, trying, you probably came from me like, I wanted the car first and was like, okay, I'll go get a job. I ended up working for the car. You know, I'm teaching my son even right now, and I give that as an example. We're going to get his first condo. It's taken a lot to make him understand, but listen, you get a condo, you rent out that bedroom. Whoever's renting that bedroom will now do what? Pay for your car payment. Like that's how you really change the game. So before you rush into wanting to buy a car, Think about, can you buy a condo? Can you buy a townhome? If you've been working for two years and you have a two year history and your credit is decent when you turn 18, 19 or 20, that's where you should be starting. How can you get an asset to pay for your liability? And, and I'm just, I'm gonna add to one, so spot on, we have to change our mindset when it comes to how we approach our money. And Coach Mo, you led with that your first night of our workshop, of our adulting and our financial literacy workshop. So. Uh, you just set the stage for all of the all of these conversations. Um, also, like I'm going back to what Coach Mo said, when you look at how much you spend, it truly changes the way you spend in the future, or at least it should. And I'll give you a perfect example. There was a time in my life where I was fiscally irresponsible. I mean, I just any any time I went somewhere, I just spent. I bought stuff for friends, whatever it was. And then I remember one month years ago, I looked at my bank app. And I, I looked at all of the items and the stores and the places I went and spent money. And I said, well, how much of how much money am I getting in the account versus what's going out of the account? And I just stopped and said, this is ridiculous. I'm blowing my money. So when you look at what you when you look at your budget, when you look at how much you spend, that should affect you as well. But Coach Mo hit the, hit the nail on the head. It's all about how we approach our money mindset. Um, one question I see we have in the chat. Let's get to that and then we'll wrap up. Uh, would you recommend having a credit card or a debit card? Which one do you think is more valuable, more meaningful? As you get older, my suggestion is credit is good to have if you know how to play the credit game. Um, debit cards, you know, they don't they don't bring the same benefit as a credit card. And this took me a long time, myself, Tron, because. I would wonder why the people would come in the bank and I pull up their accounts and they'd have all this money and I'd be like, you know, you need a debit card. I don't want a debit card. I'd be like, but 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 you need a debit card because the bank told me that you need a debit card. So I'm trying to get you to get a debit card. I started to see there's different ways to using your money. And like I said, with those those cash rewards, people who become money savvy will learn how to navigate with credit versus the debit card. Um, but as you're starting out, I do suggest you start with the debit card. 
Um, if, if, if you see that you're very responsible with the debit card, then you move to a credit card. And if you can use the credit card to, to earn cash back, whenever you go to get gas, you, you use the credit card because that will be smart because you'll get cash back as long as you're going to transfer that payment right over to the credit card to pay it off. And, and I know next week we're going to talk about credit. I'm sure this is going to come up. So for the person that asked that question, please make sure you're on with us next week. Um, one other thing to keep in mind, and I didn't learn this until my late 20s, um, when you're opening up a credit card, if your credit isn't that strong yet, or if you just want to continue building the credit, and the coach might lean on you to you know guide this a little bit, but a secure card always helps. And a secure card, the difference between a secure credit card and just a, a regular credit card, and I don't know the proper terminology, but a secure card is where you give the bank your money, you establish the credit line, you say, okay, instead of the bank loaning you $300 to put on your credit card, you give the bank $300. And what that says to the bank is, the bank says, well, let's see how well you manage your money given our credit line, and then we will convert that to a traditional credit card and you'll be able to increase the amount of money that you have on the account. But it's you using your money to establish your credit. So when you get to that point where you're ready to establish credit or enhance your credit, also consider a secure card. Now, by that point, you'll probably have talked to mom and dad. You'll, you will have sat down with a, 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 you know, a bank consultant and they'll let you know what your options are, but just keep secure card in the back of your mind. Um, and Coach Mo, we have, we have one other question What's the best way to use a credit card to build credit to hopefully buy a condo or house in the future? Just any tips for credit use? Uh, Colleen, you want me to make them wait? I, 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 let me give you one. W one tip is it's going to show that you are responsible when you have the credit card. And credit history starts the day you first apply and get credit. So the earlier that you can get credit, the earlier that you can get someone to add you as an authorized user um, on their account, this is when you start building that credit score. It goes from the first trade line you open. So um, I'm sure my colleagues are going to go into it a little bit deeper um, as to what the breakdowns are for credit in regards to the various components. But you want to start thinking, and, and I'm, I'm loving her question because, you know, in high school, I was nowhere near thinking about a condo or a house. Like, I, all I wanted was a car. I was like, man, I just need a car. If if I can get a car, my life is going to be fit. I, I can sleep in my car. Who cares? I just need a car, right? But, you know, hopefully all of you all on here are thinking now differently. A car isn't the first accomplishment that I want to have. I want an asset that's going to appreciate, and that is real estate. So if you can get into real estate, and just think about it, some cars are $40,000. They're like one bedrooms out here, and I know they're probably hard to find, but if you can get something for $50,000, and you are going to buy a car for $40,000, which means you'll probably end up spending about $50,000 anyway for the car at the end of the day, let's start with the asset that's gonna give you continuous appreciation. You have it for a year, you're seasoned in the property. Now you go say, I want a home equity loan against my property, which is gonna be a 3% interest rate versus a 12% interest rate for a car. I mean, let me stop. Cause boys, oh, yeah, coach, well, yeah, coach, wait, 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 hang on, hang on. We're gonna talk about credit next week. You see where this conversation's going. So we need everybody plus everyone else to come back next week for adulting and financial literacy. I promise you we're gonna, cause there's so much more I can talk about when it comes to real estate, land. Uh, there's so many other things that we could talk about in terms of things that appreciate versus things that depreciate. Do me a favor. I probably don't even need to ask this, but I need everyone to show some love in the chat. I mean, everybody show some love in the chat to Coach Mo for taking time out of her day, her schedule, to meet with you and go over all things adulting and financial literacy. So there we go, Coach Mo. They're dropping love in the chat. Um, Colleen's even adding adding on to it. So you know, uh, it, this is a hot topic, and and Colleen, this is something that we'll probably have to revisit during the school year. Um, but but there goes the love. There goes the love. So thank you so much, Coach Mo. Thank you, students, for logging on. Uh, I'm just gonna hit this for ten seconds. 
we put the forms to the incentives in the chat. I'm pretty sure most of you saw that. Uh, we can we can drop that in the chat right before we go. Uh, we'll do that one more time. But thank you again next week, Adulting and Financial Literacy, same time next week, right here. Sign up, get more of your friends to sign up and pass this information along. And Colleen's dropping the incentive forms in the chat as we speak. Make sure to click on them now so you can open up a tab and fill those forms out as you need to. Uh, save them as your you know favorites, whatever. Um, and then I think, is it this Thursday or next Thursday, Colleen? I'm, I should know the schedule. Uh, our scholarship, yes. Next, next Thursday is the next scholarship. And it's just important to point out that next Monday's adulting class is all about credit. And Monique, do you want to um, uh, provide the information about the two fabulous speakers we have coming next week? Yes. So next week, Tuesday, <laughs> um, right? It is Tuesday. Yes, Tuesday. Yes. I'm already out of the country, right? No. But yeah, so next Tuesday, guys, you all will get to hear from Comerica Bank's market president for the Florida market. He's going to come on and speak to you all about just credit in general, what it means to have credit. And then you're going to hear from my colleague in Michigan. He, he goes by Mike D. And Mike D is going to help really break down everything you're going to need to know about credit. So um, he's not Coach Mo. I told Colleen that. I was like, he's not Coach Mo, but he knows everything that you all are going to need to know. So please make sure you give him the same amount of attention, the same amount of questions. And, and guys, if, if anything, the credit part is going to be one of the most important to add on to what we've been talking about to help change your trajectory for your future. Fantastic. And Monica, just, you know, FYI, maybe we ought to be promoting this particular session uh, coming up next week because it's such an important topic. We'll talk tomorrow. Um, you guys right. are amazing. And what a team, what a team you are. And I love that last slide, that um, circle of life slide. That's just, it's so true. It's so true. So uh, I'm going to stop recording Yep. and we are good to go. Let me find the right button. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you next week. I can't wait till we do some of these in person. I, I really can't. I can't, right? can't wait. I can't wait. Uh, students, thank you. Thank you, guys. We'll see you next week. Oh, and uh, we're, we're doing another uh, financial aid presentation this Friday. I'll be leading that. So if anyone has questions about their FAFSA, about fin general financial aid information more so than anything, but also just ways of saving in college. I'm going to go over a lot of that stuff and even talk about some things that I didn't get to last Friday. Oh, yeah, there's more. So We'll see you Friday for those that are coming. We'll see you next week. Thanks again, Coach Mo, Colleen, my partner in crime. Thank you for all you do behind the scenes uh, and just in general. And students, thank you for taking time out of your day to join us. Enjoy your summer. We'll see you Friday. We'll see you next week.